Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. And today I wanna to teach you how you can get more dramatic, beautiful, and natural color out of your raw files that you wouldn't necessarily have if you didn't use this technique. So here is our before, here's our after. Here's our before, here's our after. I know it might not look like there's a lot going on here, but there's some crazy stuff going on in the background and I've got a lot to teach you, so let's go. So today I want to talk about how you can get more color out of your raw files. Now this is something that you wouldn't want to do for every single photo, but there are some images where you're like, man, I really wish I could get a little bit more color in that photo like I'm seeing right here in this Yosemite image. I want more of that beautiful breathtaking light that's hitting the side of El Capitan right there and a little bit even in the background there. I want more of that gorgeous color that I saw when I was there. It's not quite there in my raw file. That's because my camera didn't capture that color like I wanted it to, okay? So we can get more out of our RAW files in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom in the Camera Calibration tab. Now this Camera Calibration tab is right here. You're gonna see it in between your effects and your presets if you're in Adobe Camera Raw. If you're in Lightroom, it'll be somewhere towards the bottom of the stack when you're going through your editing process there and the develop module. So I'm gonna click on this guy right here. Now you'll see the process here is set to version five. You can see that there were many other versions of this before. Typically, this is a place where you would build a camera profile, meaning you'd import your image into Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom, whatever that might be, and you'd make a camera profile for that and then that camera profile will be used to make an overlay of different colors that would happen on your photograph uh, as far as changing those colors and what your camera recorded. Now that's kind of a thing of the past now because profiles have actually been removed from here. And as you know, profiles are now over here in the basic tab. And this happened in Adobe CC 2019, I believe. So if we go back over to this calibration tab, what can this thing do for us now if it's not being used to develop a profile, a camera profile that we're gonna use in our editing process where we import things in through a camera profile? Well, now it can be used as a way to get more color out of your image. And it's wild the way it happens because it's not actually changing uh, a, a color like HSL would. HSL, and I'm gonna talk about this here, we're gonna do some demonstration here on the difference between a hue saturation adjustment and this camera calibration section. So things are a little bit different. What I'm gonna do though, before I get in there, I'm just gonna go over to the basic settings and I'm gonna pop auto on here and get this thing kind of to where I'd want it to be when I'm doing my editing, okay? Nothing crazy here, just trying to get this dialed in where I want it to be, maybe change the color a little bit here. It's also different than this temperature slider here, which we'll talk about when we get into the next section. I wanna go over this first, and then I'll go over like the dynamics on why, what it's doing, how it's doing it, and why it's better than tint and temperature and HSL, okay? So here's a basic idea of where I'd want my image to be. Um, I'm gonna go over to the camera calibration, and here you're gonna see shadows. Well, it's pretty self-explanatory. What it's gonna do in the shadows, is gonna make the shadows more green or the shadows more magenta. And you might think, well, why would I use that? Well, sometimes uh, when you're editing your photographs, you'll see that when you increase the shadow area with the uh, sliders over here in your basic settings, if you increase the shadows up, you might get a greenish effect in those shadow areas. This is a place where you can actually offset that. If it turns green in those shadows, well, you can bump up the magenta here a little bit, and that will offset the green that you're getting because they're complementary colors and they cancel each other out. It's pretty freaking cool. Right here is red primary, green primary, and blue primary. Now the RGB primary, you have to imagine what it's doing here. It's it's actually modifying the pixels of the image, like the actual pixel values of the of the photo that we're working with, because our camera records red pixels, green pixels, and blue pixels, okay? So if you shift the hue of any of these, I'm gonna shift the hue of that red primary. So I'll bring that over. If you increase the saturation, it's gonna increase the intensity of that color red. So all the reds here are starting to get that more intense color, which is actually, this is more like what we saw, what, what was this, but our camera didn't really capture that. Now you don't wanna take these things too far because if you take them too far, it starts to look unrealistic, especially if you're doing a buildup process with your workflow, you're not gonna to wanna to take these too far. So I'll bring that down just a slight bit over here. Maybe even bring that down a little bit there. Now the green primary, you might think to yourself, well, green isn't gonna affect my red, but it does. 
Why? That's because this is going into the actual pixel value of an individual pixel. And this color red right here does actually have a little bit of green in it. When we go over here to our demonstration, I'll show you how that works. So I'll move this up a little bit and that's going to start increasing the saturation in the green primary there, which then if we offset this, we can start getting more of that beautiful light that we saw that had more of that orangish type of glow on here. Now, is there a rhyme or reason to what I'm doing right now? I'm going to admit no. <laughs> okay. What I do when I come into this camera calibration area, it's, it's basically a per image or per image set. So if I have 30 photos of this same spot, I might be able to use these settings on those 30 different photos, but because all the pixels are going to be different and the way your camera recorded them, depending on the white balance and many other different things, these settings aren't going to be exact every single time. So it's, it's, it's an eyeball thing. It's a taste thing. You move it around until you see what your eye likes that matches your vision or it matches what you saw when you were there. The blue primary, uh, pretty self-explanatory, but this is great. This blue primary slider here, especially in the saturation, is a phenomenal place to go if you've got a hazy blue sky that's not quite right and you want to boost it up a little bit and give it some more life. This blue primary section is awesome. But if you adjust the hue, it's going to adjust the overall hue of that blue as well. Now this was encroaching on sunset. So those those blues were actually more into the magenta type of realm. But as you can see, my camera didn't capture that nearly as what it should. And why? Well, if we think about what our camera captures, if we photograph something, it's taking one instance of white balance at any given time or color, it's making an adjustment. Yes, you can change your white balance later. That's great. However, what it's saying is it's saying, okay, if you want me to make this look more yellow, I cannot make it look more blue. Okay. So it has to do a trade off in your colors. This is actually much closer to what we saw while we were there. I might dial this back a little bit on these saturations on the red because when I turn that eyeball off, I'm like, yeah, that's not quite exactly the way it was. Uh, so I'll bring this down a little bit here too on the hue and shift that back just a little bit. Okay, maybe drop that just a little bit more. And that's more close to what we saw when we were there when we were at Yosemite photographing the sunset. So we can use this area to get more color out of our image, which is very helpful because then if we do go and jump into HSL, these adjustments now don't have to move quite as far because we're setting up our raw file with beautiful color before we start doing some of the HSL adjustments or even before we jump into Photoshop to, to modify these things. When we do it at the raw level, we're getting all that raw data, which is a gorgeous amount of raw data. It manipulates the color in a way that's just really phenomenal actually because it's not destroying the pixels in any way shape or form it's just shifting the way it was told to record it which is really powerful so let's talk about this one here and see how this can be uh, displayed and what's so different about hsl okay so let's hop over into the hsl adjustment and first let's do this let's just go into the saturation of red basically what we have here is we have a color wheel on the left hand side that has 100 percent saturation the color wheel on the right has a reduced saturation and a slightly reduced brightness. So when we increase the red value here, look at how that red gets. It's not exactly perfect right now. So we'll increase the blue value here too, and the green value here as well, because these are the, the adjustments that we're going to get when we hop over into the camera calibration. What this section is doing is it's saying, okay, let's group some pixels together that look like these pixels, and then we'll make this modification in the HSL adjustment. Trust me, I am not a pixel engineer. I don't work for Adobe, never have, never do, never will, probably never. I'm not smart enough for that. So I don't know technically exactly what's happening here, but this is my assumption based off of what I'm seeing with the camera calibration. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna make a snapshot of this, and I'm just gonna call this HSL plus in HSL. Okay, so that's a hue saturation increase in the HSL tab. That's just for me so that I know that that was the increase there. You'll see how this is all going to come together. I'm going to camera all defaults. I'm going to pop over here to calibration. Now in calibration, I'm going to increase the saturation of red, increase green, and you're going to see something here. You're like, wait a second. Why when you increase that green, did it increase that red? I'll show you that in a second here in Photoshop. And then we'll increase this up here. And look at that. We're actually getting this more closely to what this color wheel looks like over here to get those colors more precise to their saturation than what they were in the HSL tab. And how do I know that? Well, I'm going to make a snapshot for this. I'm going to do HSL plus in Cal. That way I know that this is the camera calibration settings. And then we'll go back and we'll go camera all default. 
So with the camera roll defaults, I'm also gonna make a snapshot of this. We'll call this default. So that's what we brought in, okay? So now we have the default settings here. We have the HSL in the calibration mode and HSL increase in the actual hue saturation and luminance area that we usually increase these colors. So look at the difference here. I'm gonna go up one more. Look at the calibration, look at HSL. Look at the difference there. You see how now in this HSL plus in calibration, we're, we're actually able to get the saturation of those colors that were muted in the default back to their original saturation. We, we can't do that in HSL. And when we do that and we go in the HSL and we bump it up plus 100, we get this pixelization sometimes and we get this random nastiness that happens when we bring it up that high. And again, I'm not a pixel engineer, so I don't know exactly why that's happening. But this HSL plus, when we do that in the camera calibration section, when we come back over here, we're getting a, a, a almost pure boost in our colors. Now, I wouldn't recommend that you take these uh, saturation adjustments in this camera calibration and bring them up to 100. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes to show you that this area can get you more natural, more pure, and more realistic colors for your RAW files. So let's take a look at how this differs from tint and temperature. So if we come over to tint and temperature here, the tint and temperature, if you look at what's happening here, the tint and temperature is affecting the overall tint and temperature of the entire photo, meaning it's gonna globally adjust this. It's not worried about what pixels or what, it's basically just doing a, a wash of color. That's why our zones down here and our, our tonal values are changing. Let's pop over here to this calibration and see the difference. If we pop over to calibration and we move the saturation or the hue and we do this some crazy effect here, what you'll notice here is that our tonal ranges don't change at all like it would if we adjusted this with the tint or temperature of the overall tint and temperature of the overall color of the image through tint and temperature. So this is different than HSL and it's also very different from the tint and temperature adjustments. So why does it work like this when we increase the saturation to plus 100 here, plus 100 here, plus 100 here, does our red change? Because when this is set to zero, our red starts to get darker and green it starts to get darker. Well, let's take a look at that in Photoshop. So let's take a look at why these colors increased when we bumped up the amount of blue and green that was uh, in our camera calibration settings. So I'm gonna take the color picker here, and I'm gonna click on this color. What you're gonna see here is this red is actually 255 red. You'll see that it has zero green pixels in it and zero blue pixels in it, okay? But when I click on this one, this has 175 red, 98 green, and 98 blue. So what's happening here is that camera calibration area is looking at the pixel and it's saying, okay, because this pixel has a presence of green and blue in it, I'm going to allow this to get more saturated, not just in the reds, but also in the green and the blue area. So this red can't get fully saturated unless it also has the help of the green and the blue that is in there in the cal camera calibration settings, which is different than what's happening in the HSL. In the HSL, when you tell red to become more red, or increase the saturation of red, it is looking at a red pixel, a literal red pixel, and it's bumping up the presence of red there. Whereas the camera calibration is looking at and saying, hold on, there's some green and there's some blue in here. I can't give you 100% saturation for this red without going into the green and the blue as well. So then these sliders that we see here aren't necessarily just for the color red. You might find that when you bump up the green primary in either the hue or the saturation, that you're gonna get an increase in the color red. It just depends on the presence of the color that's in there at any given time. So this area has become a place that I've been doing a lot of work and research in lately, trying to figure out how this thing works and how I can use it in my workflow. It is slightly different now that we're in version five versus version four, three, two, and one, as we've seen in the past. They didn't work quite as well. So now that we're in version five in Photoshop CC 2020, this is a killer place to get more color out of your RAW files. It allows me to take this image even further now with my RAW processing and my Photoshop processing because I'm getting more natural and more beautiful and more rich colors at at the raw level before I finish my post-production. If I pop over here to this photograph, this is a recent photo of a bald eagle that I photographed. Looking at this, look at where I took these green, red, and blue primaries, okay? So if we look at the before, here's the before. There's not a whole lot of color there to work with. It's very dry, it's very drab, and it doesn't have a whole lot of thick color for me to work with. Actually, I would have to do quite a bit of work to get the color out of this if I were to try and use HSL adjustments. But using this camera calibration tab, look at the blue that I was able to get out of the background there. And even more so, let's zoom into this bald eagle here and let's turn this off again so we can see what that looks like and look at the difference there. There's even more 
color on the side of his wings, almost making it look like when we have these settings on here that he was shot more at that sunset or sunrise glowing light when this was probably about 10, 1030 in the morning when this was photographed. So you can use this not just for landscape photos like I showed you in the first one. You can use it for wildlife. You can use it for architecture. You can use it for portraits. What I'm going to tell you here when it comes to this, though, is that you're going to need to practice with it to see what kind of results you can predict that you're going to get when you use it. And don't forget, you can make presets from it. I've made many presets from this that help me boost and amplify the colors in my images so I can get these beautiful, robust raw files that have gorgeous color in them. So I implore you to experiment with this. As I said, I've spent a lot of time experimenting with these sliders just to see what they do to my photos over the course of many different photos. It took a long time for me to get to the point where I could even try to talk about them with you. So when you are working with these, you're going to have to experiment. You're probably not going to like your initial results, especially if you're trying to use it to get more skin tone colors. But with a little bit of finessing, a little bit of practicing and understanding that this is working at the pixel level in a different way than HSL, I think you're going to be very happy with your results. It makes your work a lot easier when you're going into Photoshop gives you more natural color to work with and your overall product will be better. Again, my name is Blake Rudis. I want to thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. If you haven't subscribed, please do so and ring the bell so you get notifications when I come out with new tutorials. And while you're at it, why not just give me a comment down below, like it, share it, tell a friend and you know, do whatever you want with this. I think it's some good stuff and I thought it'd be a good idea to share it with you. Ring in the new year with some new innovation.